You'd think that after a major smash hit like Spy X Family, people would be more keen into looking into spy related content, whether it be through anime or manga. I mean, look at Buddy Daddies. They literally feasted off of that concept. Then there's Mission Ozakura Family that's been running in the most popular shonen manga magazine in the world for almost 200 chapters now that's literally about a spy family in the best way possible, yet I haven't seen a single soul talk about it. I've seen more discussion about Ruri Dragon and that has less than 10 chapters. What gives? Mission Yuzakura Family is the story of a young man named Taiyo Asano who was thrust into a ridiculous world of spies after becoming entangled with his next door neighbor and closest friend, Butsume Yuzakura. How did it get to this point? Well, Taiyo's whole family tragically passed away in a car crash, leaving him an orphan. Ever since then, he's been scared to get to close people since he's afraid that they might die one day. Fortunately or unfortunately for him, Butsume Yuzakura is there to the rescue. Taiyo comes to find out that Butsume is the head of a legendary spy family called the Yuzakura family. In fact, she's the 10th head of the Yuzakura family, which is a spy family that are genetically built different to be the greatest spies in the world. Taiyo finds himself in a situation where he's either gonna die due to how close he is with Mutsumi, or he has to marry her so he can join the Yuzakura family itself. So naturally, he marries her and they live happily ever after. Psych! He marries her and joins the Yuzakura family, and that's where the fun begins. Currently, the Yuzakura family has six members, with five of them being high rank spies, all with specialties and specific powers. So naturally, you think Mutsumi is the strongest one, right? Actually, no, not at all. Mutsumi is the head of the family because she has no power. You see, the head of the Yuzakura family is the most valuable commodity on the planet, as the woman holding the position is able to pass down the legendary Yozakura genes and give birth to a new, stronger generation of Yozakura. In the world of this manga, the spy scene is huge and there's constantly hitmen and criminals trying to get Mutsumi for her extremely valuable blood. But why? What makes the Ozaku family so terrifying to the point that grown villains are hunting down a 15 year old girl and putting everything on the line for her? To be frank, they're complete fucking monsters. You think these fellows are your normal crowd that you can find at the local Kmart? You'd be dead wrong. Like literally dead wrong. Each one of the Yuzakura family members is a perfected killing machine and they all use their powers to protect Mutsumi. Don't worry though, they're also very wholesome. Well, at least a family. So let's start off the Yuzakuras by talking about Kyoichiro Yuzakura. He's the eldest brother of the Yuzakura siblings who is basically able to dismantle everything with his steel spider ability. He's the strongest member of the family by far and is pretty much a badass. There's only one problem though. He's a complete weirdo with a siscon. I don't really have to expand on this. He tries to pounce on Mutsumi every chance he gets and it's really, really weird. Like he literally has a room filled with secret pictures of her. Next up we have Futu Taba Yuzakura, who's an Aikido wielding monster in a small package. She's the eldest sister and is obsessed with Lolita fashion, but don't let her fool you. She's crazy, crazy strong, and a great sister to boot. To round out the remaining members of the Yuzakura family, we have Nanao, the medical genius, Shinzo, the weapons expert that's built like Chris Bumstead, but he turns into Weenie Hut Jr. SpongeBob without his guns, Kengo, the disguised loving femboy, and Shion, the hacker who destroys entire governments by turning their security into Mario and literally playing them into defeat. Does it make sense? Absolutely not. But regardless, it's an extremely creative power, and to be honest, I've never seen hacking done like this before, so I'll let it slide. So, with all of these extreme Extremely talented spies in a world where everyone is out to get them. You think this manga was about Tayo taking out organizations with them for world peace? Yeah, no. Actually, this manga has a lot of slice of life elements in it and is often very lighthearted when it comes to discussing spy topics. Don't worry, you'll know it's very unserious in the beginning when Tayo has to fend off a bomber that's obsessed with Twitter. See, the spy world is kind of like ours in Yozofam. There's a monthly spy magazine that has stuff like the most attractive spy and other nonsense tabloids usually have. There's, there's underground malls for spies, online auctions for spy equipment, a spy school, a spy exam, a spy organization. It's very much like Hitman from Sakamoto. Days. This makes for very, very exciting slice of life chapters, which involve life or death situations for Tayo, which is literally a normal day in his life. Due to everyone hunting down Mutsumi, Tayo is often on complete guard around her. However, to protect her properly, he was trained and tested by the Yuzakura family siblings, who basically threw death machines at him, hoping he'd make it through. The siblings joined up to put Tayo through traps, hacking training, sensory deprivation, poison resistance training. Yeah, basically hell. By the end of it, Tayo's quite the spy, but I don't really envy him. I'm glad that throughout the manga, Tayo's power level is actually handled really well, and we do see him progressively get stronger. We see this through Kyoichiro, who stays insulting Tayo since he's jealous of his bond with Mutsumi. However, as Tayo learns more and gets closer to Kyoichiro's level, he comes to respect him. Overall, really like the slice of life chapters throughout the manga. It always starts with Tayo doing a normal task but evolves into life or death for him in the funniest way possible. Like when Kyoichiro was throwing chalk at him in school with intent to kill so Tayo would be forced to basically have his body react even in his sleep. Through these chapters, we get to see the deep bonds of the Yuzakura family between members within the family along with Tayo's relationships with them. It's kind of like the deep bond we'll have with each other if you like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. We get to see why each of them specialize in their certain field as Tayo gets to know them and Tayo himself even helps them get through some of their biggest mental blocks. The siblings are really close themselves, with special relationships formed between every one of them, whether it be Kengo and Shion being trolls, or Futaba and Kyoichiro competing to see who's the best elder sibling. But the best chemistry by far in this manga is between Tayo and Mutsumi. They are so cute together. They're obviously head over heels for each other and keep supporting each other whenever they can. Both sides always surpass their limits and pull through when the other is in danger and so it's always so cute to see them save each other. Their slice of life dates are also adorable as well. Their relationship's progression also felt really natural. I love this pairing. A lot. 
Don't worry though, there's still an overarching plot that features quite the compelling villain. As I mentioned before, Yozakura family blood is extremely valuable due to a protein in their blood called Somene. This protein is behind the superhuman abilities of the Yoza fam members and grants them an ability called blooming, which varies from user to user. The head's heart has the most Somene, making them the most valuable, but this also makes them pretty much powerless as well. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was some evil fella looking to become some Captain America superhuman, I'd be fiending for some Somene. Unfortunately, it's hard to get since the Yoza fam are just elite in every way possible, so the villain group of the series, Tan Popo, decided to make a derivative version of it to become stronger. I won't delve into all the details for spoiler reasons, but learning about the history of the Uzaka family and how the heads dealt with this Omnian was extremely interesting and added a lot to the world building. The main villain himself is the father of the current generation of the Uzaka family, Momo Yozakura, and let me tell you something, he is genuinely terrifying and phenomenal. He comes off as an extremely loving and overprotective father because that's what he is, to the extreme. He will put his kids through unimaginable pain just to make them stronger and smile at them as if nothing is wrong. He'll casually chomp off his fingers or scratch his face till it's bloody out of rage, but will then smile immediately and say it's because he's such a loving father. Seriously, he's a very, very good, twisted villain. As for the art, mangaka Hitsuchi Gondara is quite talented with the pen. There's a lot of really cool double spreads and I love how they draw blooming. They also have a lot of really fun color pages scattered throughout Yoza Fem which are a blast to see. If you like a great mix of wholesome slice of life spy madness and actual intense missions that have proper stakes in the story, then you'll definitely like Mission Yozakura Family. It's filled with lovable characters and has a fantastic couple that will remain as Weekly Shonen Jump's best for many years to come. Not like that's saying much. At all. Like at all.